Hey folks, Engineer775 here. I'm about to disinfect a well. This is a procedure, and I'll put a link in the description. That's just a PDF file, step by step, on how you disinfect a well. This well actually came back positive for coliform bacteria, which is in all naturally occurring water sources, but we also, they have a trace of E. coli. I don't know if it's from the well or from the camper that is attached to the system, so I'm isolating this off. We also had a test kit, a water safe test kit, so we've done our own bacteria test, and you can test your own well water. I'll put a link for that as well. So I'm trying to isolate the system, troubleshoot what's going on here. Um, I've been drinking out of this well, so, <laughs> and the gentleman said it came back positive for E. coli. So I've drunk uh, water from wells all over the country, so I'm really into building my immune system. So I guess that's what I'm after. But in all seriousness, if you need to disinfect a well, your well, it's a very simple process. Regular Clorox, regular Clorox, not the scented kind, one gallon. A funnel is also helpful. Depending on your well seal, you'll have vent tubes or other access ports where you need to open up and get the gallon of Clorox into the well. And what we're going to do, pour the gallon of Clorox into the well, then hook to a faucet or spigot with a hose and run the pump back down into the well till you smell that chlorine real strong and then shut that down. Then go open up all of your cold water faucets, outdoor spigots. Uh, we're gonna run the shower um, and uh, on the camper, but everything, everywhere that the water goes, it needs to have the chlorine uh, touch it. So what we're going to do is do that and then shut the system down for 6 to 24 hours to make sure everything's um, killed. And then we'll come back and hook up this hose to an outdoor spigot and then run it into a safe area till you do not smell chlorine and then you should be good to go. And then they say after a, that waiting period to come back um, after 7 to 10 days and do another, a new, do another test. You can do your own testing or you can set it in. Uh, ours is a Department of Health and Environmental Conservation, so we, you can send it in there, but it's quicker just to get a water safe kit and do it yourself. So we're doing both on this because we don't need to have E. coli in the wells, but we don't know the source. We're just gonna go ahead and disinfect everything. Again, links will be in the description. So you're just gonna take this gallon of bleach and pour it in slowly. After drinking so much E. coli water, I guess I need to take a swig of this. This will fix me up. Just kidding. Um, I never got sick from drinking this well water. It was very, it's been very hot here, so... <laughs> Choice was E. coli or die. Uh, just kidding. Because E. coli could definitely kill you if you get you dehydrated. So, that's it. Got our Clorox going in. And now we're going to open up the hose, get this pump running. Wait till I kind of smell chlorine. Pump just came on, no chlorine yet. Alright, I'm just gonna recirculate this now. Starting to get a hint of chlorine. Just gonna make sure that the water that's in the pump line is full of uh, the chlorine before we run it through the house. So we know that whatever is sent through the bladder tank, through our system, has got enough concentration of Clorox to kill everything in the lines. So you just recirculate it for a little bit. Looping it around in a circle here. Okay, we definitely have chlorine coming out of our hose now. That means the well pipe from the pump up, everything's saturated in Clorox. It's important that you do that. We ran the hose for a long time before we smelled the Clorox. 
Otherwise, you're not, you, you can't guarantee that wherever the, you're going to run enough water to saturate downstream. So we're good now. What we're going to do is go and open up all the cold water spigots that we can and, um, and then shut it down and let it sit for 6 to 24 hours and then we'll flush the system out. And so that'll be it. Actually, the homeowner's going to do that. They're coming by later on and they're going to flush it out. So that's it to disinfect the well. Very simple procedure. I know people are grossed out about having all that Clorox in the system, but you can't afford to get E. coli, especially in a grid down situation. If you don't know how to rehydrate yourself or you don't know what's going on, um, you know, you're not going to have access to an ER to go get a you know, saline bag or hyperal solution put into you via IV. So you can't mess around with uh, bacteria. You want to make sure your well's in good shape. I'd have a couple of water uh, testing kits on hand. Obviously our body gets used to the well water and we, we, we um, build that immunity and um, antibodies, whatever, to kill the, the, to be able to handle some levels of bacteria. But if it's E. coli, don't mess around. And so this is the procedure you want to go through and, and be safe, especially in a grid down. Um, you might want to just also go to filtration. Filter your drinking water. I think laundry and everything else, cooking, you'll probably be fine. But if you want to, you know, precaution, just just go to filtration in a grid down. You can't afford to get uh, dysentery in a, in a grid down situation. Okay, I think that's it. Simple disinfection procedure. Engineer 775 signing out.